The year is 1997. Hong Kong has just been returned to Chinese rule from the UK. Grandmaster Gary Kasparov is defeated by the computer Deep Blue at chess. In sports, Mike Tyson bites Evander Holyfield's ear and is suspended from boxing. A 21-year-old Tiger Woods wins his first Masters. And in the business world, Microsoft is the world's most valuable company at $261 billion as a gentleman named Steve Jobs returns back to Apple. And in the bag industry, when it comes to what professional men carry, the briefcase rules. Now, there is an interesting trend with messenger bags, basically briefcases with a strap. A lot of people seem to be using this, but the briefcase makers now, they're not too worried. They are going to be on top forever. Or are they? Now, first up, let's define exactly what a briefcase is. So, a briefcase is a narrow, hard-sided, box-shaped bag or case used mainly for carrying papers and equipment with a handle. Now, there's a wide variety of styles out there, but the main ones are going to be a portfolio, which is a handless case that you carry in the hand under the arm. There's also the folio case, which is a portfolio with a retractable handle. And then there's the common attache or diplomat case. This is a box style case characteristically made out of leather fitted over an internal hinged frame that opens into two compartments. As the name implies, it was originally carried by attaches when they had important paperwork that needed to be secured and they needed to be able to maintain it at all times. They didn't want that paper to bend. They wanted to protect it from the elements. This was a case made specifically to move important documents. And let's not forget about catalog cases. These are similar to attache cases, except they are even bigger. Now, briefcases descend from the satchel, which was a 14th century bag carried by messengers, and the briefcase simply evolved. And usually, again, one of the key characteristics we see is a solid structure, a frame. Now, the idea of a hinged frame was first developed in Paris in 1826 with a carpet bag and many other bags followed suit. It was seen as practical. It was seen as something functional. And the idea of being able to protect contents with a frame was accepted and just became very common in white collar business professions. So, from the 1850s onwards, they started to become more common. And if you go back, you look at any newsreels from the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, it seems every businessman in a large city who had important things to move around was carrying an attache, a briefcase, basically. In fact, if you think of a powerful man on Wall Street, yes, he's going to be wearing that suit. And what is he going to have? A briefcase. It's become synonymous with somebody that works in law, somebody that works in finance, especially in a big city. Now, backpacks, on the other hand, have a much more mixed history. You see them in cultures across the world, and they would have various names and they would have various functions. In general, there are four categories of backpacks. You're going to see frameless, external frame, internal frame, and body packs. That being said, it was the frameless backpack, or maybe known as knapsack, rucksack, school bag, sack pack, book sack. Yep, tons of names, but the key characteristic here is you're going to be carrying it over your shoulders on your back. That's what separates this type of bag from all the other ones out there. Now, for most of their recorded history, they were just a practical bag that was used by hikers, by students, by travelers. And in fact, the word backpack didn't really appear in our lexicon till 1910. Now, you may be wondering, are there bags out there that can be both a briefcase and a backpack? That way I can get the best of both worlds? The answer is yes. That's why, gents, I want to introduce you to today's sponsor, Esri, and check out their Elite. This is a bag that I've got personally, and I absolutely love it. It is both a briefcase and a backpack. If you're a business owner, if you're a CEO, if you're an executive and you want to look good while still having the functionality of a backpack, this is the bag you've been looking for. Guys, I absolutely love Esri's backpacks. I've got a variety of them. Now, this bag in particular has tons of room for your electronics, for your computer, for books, for paperwork, for your pens, anything that you need when you're traveling. And let's talk about the design. Let's talk about the color. This thing looks amazing. So, if you're going to be taking this into the boardroom, it is going to be 100% appropriate. What I love about this is when you're commuting, when you're traveling for most of the time, you can have it as a backpack and then it transforms right into a briefcase as you're walking into the office. And besides the great looks, I love how Esri backpacks are incredibly functional. When you put these on your shoulders, you're going to have cushioning on the shoulders, on your back, and they've got hidden pockets all over the place, whether it's on the straps, on the side, so that you can easily access your passports. You can even carry a little bit of cash, keep it in there. And the Esri Travel is another one that I absolutely love and I've taken with me multiple times. In fact, I use it as my day-to-day -day bag whenever I'm just going to work in Starbucks. One thing I really love about a lot of these bags is they open up fully. So, you notice how the zippers just fully open up this bag. And this is really functional, just really useful. Again, if you're going to be packing clothing, 
clothing, packing your gym clothes. And of course, if you're traveling through the airport, you've got luggage, your Esri backpack fits right there on the luggage telescopic handle. And again, gents, I love the durability. Not only are these backpacks lightweight, but these are backpacks that can take a beating. Just clean them off. If you get a little bit of dirt on them. Highly recommended, gents. For the best deal, use that link in the description of today's video. So what led to the fall of the briefcase? Well, we started to see the cracks in the wall whenever we saw the messenger bag rise and the sales shot up. The messenger bag was kind of a variation of the briefcase. It was a mix. You know, you had that big strap going across. You could wear it in a variety of ways. On one shoulder, you could carry it with a hand. You could strap it across the body. I remember even wearing this thing almost like a backpack. Point being is this was a pretty versatile bag, but it addressed a big issue and that was the rise of the personal computer, the, the laptop I'm talking about. In those laptops, I had a huge laptop and I needed to get a larger messenger bag. They were usually made out of a canvas material, relatively inexpensive, but they actually fit the need of the person. You know, we, we looked at the briefcase as something that suits work. So, if you didn't wear a suit, but you still needed to be able to carry your new equipment, this really nice laptop that you wanted to take care of that still weighed like 10 to 15 pounds, you got a messenger bag. So, with the rise of the laptop, we also saw just simply a culture of people that were rejecting dressing up. And again, the briefcase was associated with the suit. So, between those two things right there, we started seeing cracks in the wall. All of a sudden, people were going towards, hey, what other options do I have to carry my important gear, which is no longer paperwork that will be shaped, but more of a computer that I want to make sure is cushioned and protected. Now, the next step in the evolution was understanding that comfort started becoming really important. And if you've ever had a messenger bag, carrying about 30 pounds of stuff, you know that over time, it just really starts to hurt that one shoulder. That's why I started going cross carry with a lot of things. It was better, but still it didn't solve the problem and I'm going back and forth and I just felt like I couldn't run, I couldn't move really as easily. So, all of a sudden, people started looking for alternatives to the messenger bag and the backpack was right there ready to step in. Now, gents, if you're enjoying today's video, if you love your backpack or you love your briefcase, do me a favor, smash the like button. When you do this, more men find this video and I appreciate it here. It lets me know that this video is something that I should create more like. Now, I remember in business school back in 2005 at the University of Texas at McCombs, they actually gave us backpacks. And this was my first backpack that actually had a cushioned space for a laptop computer. And this was in a business environment. All of a sudden, they were putting their stamp of approval. We saw all of a sudden backpacks start to evolve. All the backpacks I had had up to that point were pretty much like knapsacks. They didn't have any type of form to them. They didn't really have any protection for a laptop. And I'm aware that they were out before then. But all of a sudden, you saw business schools starting to give these to their students because, hey, we're students. Backpacks were normally seen as very casual, acceptable. At the same time, we had not only a lot of books to carry, but we had to protect our big investment, which again was that laptop. But if you disagree with me, guys, I want to hear from you down in the comments below. You guys know I love hearing your opinions. Antonio, you're full of crap. Antonio, you're exactly right. Guys, I want to hear what are your experiences with the briefcases versus backpacks. What do you think? Guys, let me hear it down below. So, I want to reiterate, again, the backpack companies are starting to see the market. They're seeing the opportunity, not just in placing padding and giving a bit more structure to these backpacks for students, but also saying, can we go upscale? Because these students are taking these jobs and can we, you know, once they start making money, can we start making these backpacks out of leather? out of higher end materials. Bigger brands all of a sudden started coming in and charging higher market prices for backpacks that were very similar to the ones you had as a student, but now they had a fancy logo on them. Now, they were made out of better material, the stitching, the sewing, the construction, everything started stepping up. And so, now all of a sudden, the functionality of the backpack started to shine because one of the key things with a backpack compared to any bag that you carry in your hand is you're keeping the weight closer to the body. Any hiker knows this and that's why you know you get the frame backpacks, but those are a little bit overkill. But with these new backpacks that were geared towards professionals, they had padding, they kept the weight close to the body. And so, if you had 40 pounds, you had 
all of these books, you had your laptop, you had everything that you needed for a day, all of a sudden the backpack was shining through. And all of a sudden we started seeing that people were cramming, men needed a lot more and women as well. But uh, I know as a professional student and then as a young professional, a lot of you guys are working out in the morning. You're leaving your home at seven o'clock, maybe six o'clock in the morning, you're going to the gym, then you're going straight to work. You need everything. You've all of a sudden got not only your electronic components, you know, laptop you took home, but you've got your phones, you've got just all these charging devices, all of the stuff you needed to take with you. So, the backpacks started to become larger at the same time providing structure. They were made more durable. So, you saw the bottom being reinforced on these so they weren't falling apart. The straps had to, they had to go through and reinforce all the straps. But you saw the evolution of this backpack, the size, you know, not getting out of control, keeping everything having a place more companies were manufacturing. And as this happened, all of a sudden more people started picking up backpacks that were going into these professional jobs. Now, of course, in 2010, there were a lot of holdouts, especially in the conservative industries. There was just an understanding when you saw the people at the top still carrying around their briefcases, maybe they were carrying around older messenger bags, but hey, they were carrying a bag. They weren't coming in with their backpacks. And a lot of people, you know, they resisted this until they didn't because they realized that, hey, one day they just bring in the backpack, maybe in 2012, 2013. And I was reading an article over at the Wall Street Journal talking about this in particular. I'm reading through the comments, all these investment bankers, all these people that are right there in the industry in Chicago, New York, Dallas, San Francisco, and all of these people are saying, hey, yes, we saw it coming in. We resisted it initially. And then I tried it and then I realized that it is just practical to start wearing a backpack. And that is perhaps the strongest reason why the backpack is going to stick around because people have both hands free. Yes, you could argue that, you know, having one hand free for doors and for your coffee is going to be fine, but it was the advent of the smartphone and simply people working on the go and being expected to make things happen, even over their lunch break. So, you're walking down the street, guess what you're doing? A lot of people, these professionals, they're right on their phone. Is it safe? No, but it's something that they're doing anyway and they wanted to keep both hands free. I know just simply having one hand free to, you know, maybe carry an umbrella, another one to carry my coffee. I mean, you, it's just nice to be able to have your hands free. And again, because we saw the industry shift, it took a while. It took over 20 years for the backpack to make its evolution, but I think it's safe to say in 2022, the sales of professional backpacks to briefcases has got to be a huge factor. The briefcase has really fallen in terms of total sales. And do I think the briefcase is dead? No, it's going to stick around because it has a very functional purpose, especially you see some of these made out of aluminum, made out of other metals. Uh, these are great for transporting very valuable items, items that, you know, you still see people like handcuffing a briefcase to their arm because they don't want it taken. But also, I just think if you've got something that you want to make that the priority, it's not electronic. So, if you're in the world of law, if you've got important documents, papers that you are transporting and you don't want anything to happen to them, uh, I can see the advantage of a case specifically designed to be able to move documents, to be able to protect them. Um, yeah, there's always going to be a need for this particular type. Is it going to reach the same heights that it once did in the 1980s, late 1990s? The answer, I think, is no. Now, if you enjoyed this video, gents, I think you're going to love this one right here. Why did men stop wearing capes? Seriously, we used to wear capes. Why did men stop? Guys, I put this great video together for you. Go check it out. It's a good one.